Right. Uh, welcome everyone to, to this discussion um, this afternoon. We, first of all, would like to welcome you to Teaching and Learning Week. Um, this is the, the official launch of it, as it were. And this year, the Teaching and Learning Week just happens to focus on reflective practice. Now, reflective practice, we know, is more than a process. And uh, it's a process, it's, it's, it's not just a process, but it's a continuous journey um, of growth and learning and that sort of thing. And it's the, the critical lens through which educators examine their own teaching methods, their, their, their practices, fostering an environment of perpetual improvement and innovation. Now, this panel that we have here, um, they will ex this panel will explore the intricate layers of reflective writing, peer observation, and action research, and find ways in which these, these can profoundly influence your teaching practice. Now, in this discussion, we will explore the ways in which reflective writing can unlock the doors uh, to academic success and prestigious fellowships. We will also learn to harness the power of peer observation uh, 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 to refine our teaching strategies and consider ways in which action research can serve as a catalyst for elevating your educational impact. Now, the, the, the panelists that we have for today's discussion, um, they're well equipped, they're well knowledgeable and well experienced. First off, we have Dr. Mervyn Chisholm. Dr. Chisholm is an adult and higher education professional and he serves as the coordinator and manager of the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, the University of the West Indies Mona campus. And might I add, he has done so for many years. He also serves as a part-time lecturer in the School of Education, teaching higher education, adult education, and supervising master and doctoral students. Dr. Chisholm's areas of expertise include higher education, adult education, curriculum development, as well as reflective practice and peer observation. And so he, with that background, he definitely deserves to be on this panel, yeah? yeah. He brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to the UE and to this panel. Up next, we have Dr. Freddie James. Dr. James is a senior lecturer of educational leadership at the School of Education, the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. She is a University of Warwick Postgraduate Research Fellow, Scholar, and the Vice Chairman of the CARICOM team responsible for developing and implementing standards for school leaders and teachers. Her current areas of research include innovation, entrepreneurship, building leadership capacity, teacher education, action research, mm -hmm, and educational change and improvement. She has published widely on these areas in a range of journals internationally, regionally, and locally, including the Education Action Research Journal. Next, we have Dr. Leroy Hill. Dr. Hill serves as the Director for the Center of Excellence in Teaching and Learning at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. He holds a PhD in Education and e-learning from the University of Nottingham. His Academic qualifications also include a postgraduate teaching certificate at the UWI and a certificate in university and college administration from the University of Manitoba. Dr. Hill's commitment to a sustained record of effective and strategic leadership in higher education settings was recently recognized by his award of Principal Fellow in the Higher Education Academy Professional Framework. His research interests include sociocultural activity theory, distance and online education, learning designs, and teacher education, which in itself, might I add, is multifaceted. And so it, 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 it further um, equips this panel to address these issues that we're gonna look at today. Now we wanna start with an opening question to sort of not just break the ice, but sort of dissect this concept of reflective practice from different angles, yeah? So I'll probably start off with, with Dr. Hill, and then we can segue to, to Dr. Chisholm and Dr. James, um, and they can chime in where necessary. Um, but from, 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 from what is your perspective, Dr. Hill? What does reflective practice mean to you? Dr. Justin uh, Zephyrin, 
I want to thank you for um, inviting me to be part of this panel. And certainly, I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues. And I, I see reflective practice for me on a number of things. And since this is a panel, I'm going to perhaps just focus on um, the, the one I particularly like and drawn to that's writing. Uh, because I see reflective writing as a cornerstone of reflective practice. Um, you know, certainly, as you mentioned, we embark on this journey. Uh, we ought to consider writing not just as an academic exercise, but also something that takes us into different spheres, different um, avenues. Uh, think about the employability skills that it allows. Um, I am drawn particularly to reflective writing um, since... Um, you know, it it provides an opportunity for for uh, retrospect, but also looking at the future and looking at, at a lens that focusing on the future. Um, essentially, it's not only a personal development, but also for uh, allowing persons to, um, you know, document the what, how you went about doing it, what was the reason behind you doing it, and and what what has it been the impact of doing what the practical practice that you've been focusing on. So the, the, the I think for me that the how and the why, uh, understanding the how and the why is um, insightful and transformative because oftentimes we overlook our practice. And I think being intentional about writing that down provides uh, a, an idea into in, inspiration, you know? In short, for me, uh, reflective practice and in particular in writing for reflective writing um, provides a bridge between experience and insight mm -hmm. you know in the realm of of uh, higher education we often um, emphasize acquisition of knowledge but it's not just the acquisition of knowledge it's reflecting on that and in using the writing as a process uh, sometimes being very cathartic in a way of allowing you to really uh, un unwind and provides many avenues for, um, you know, allowing you to uh, give an account. And by the way, I should say here that reflective writing uh, is not just one form. It can be done in so many forms. I think one of the most popular one is our teaching portfolio that we know. And, and I know that we commit ourselves to that quite naturally. Uh, but you can write a reflective account of professional practice and present that to a uh, committee for an award. You can actually, the Higher Education Academy, we've had a number of successful success of persons within the UE recently um, submitting their reflective account of professional practice and being awarded fellowship. So the idea of reflective writing is something that has many, many benefits, including those uh, that I just mentioned. Mm. Thank you so much for that. I don't know if any of the the other panelists would like to chime in in terms of the benefits of of reflective practice and of reflective writing. Sorry, um, any anyone wants to chime in or? All right. Well, we can go straight to Dr. Chisholm. I don't know if you want to share what does reflective practice mean to you from the angle of of um but well, well, what does it mean to you 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 i don't want to box you in so you yeah, but thank you very much um for having me on the panel chair and thanks to you my colleagues at saint augustine for inviting me to participate in this panel discussion this week for your teaching emphasis week focusing on uh reflective practice. I'm delighted to be here. And reflective practice is something that we have engaged in as teachers, as faculty developers, as persons who work in the Centers for Excellence in Teaching uh, and, and Learning. And I would like to speak to the issue, more so from the perspective of teaching. Uh, Dr. Hill spoke to it from the perspective of, of writing, and I'd like to speak to it more so from the perspective of teaching and looking at it from the perspective also of what we've been doing in the certificate in university teaching and learning. And so from the very outset of this certificate, we had 
the old notion of having some kind of reflective practice embedded within this certificate program because uh, the certificate is grounded in reflective practice. The certificate is grounded in reflective teaching. And we wanted our friends who would do this activity to be always thinking about their teaching because we know that as we reflect, as we think back, as we look over, we can learn so much more. And so this whole notion of reflective practice calls us to look back, but it also calls for, for deep engagement or introspection. And some persons like to think of reflection as, mm -hmm. as looking back and reflection, the one with the X, as the one in which we engage in that great level of introspection and enhance the whole professional engagement by introspection. And at UWI, uh, we talk a lot about this in our critical friends group. So early in the program, we designed a, an opportunity for faculty to observe each other. Peer observation is one of the ways we have utilize to engage in reflective practice. We observe each other teaching, we provide feedback, we create this opportunity in a non-evaluative way for each other, each person involved in the certificate in university teaching to observe each other, to get feedback and to learn from each other. And it has gone very well. And one of the things that persons oftentimes tell us as we think about this critical friend approach to reflective practice is that in the moment of reflection, yeah. in the moment rather of observation, they feel they learn much more than even when they are giving feedback. Because as they observe the other colleague teaching, they begin to ask themselves, did I do that? Was I thinking about that? Am I doing what she's doing? Perhaps I should take my practice a little further and do what she's doing. So it pushes them to think through their practice in a very unique and dynamic way. So there is this place for what we call colleagues helping colleagues, colleagues helping and pushing each other to think back at their practice through observation and through the feedback that comes in non-evaluative ways so that you can begin to think further and to do more to enhance your own practice. There is a place for this kind of reflective engagement in teaching. Mm. Yeah. And if, if I may add as well, mm -hmm. the, the very act of peer observation requires some sort of writing. And so that reflective writing, yes. the, when you're doing the peer observation, the reflective writing component also comes in there. So mm -hmm. we can see that there is a natural affinity between persons when your reflection the writing it because there's an instrument that we use in during the, for the peer observation to really take account of what you're doing. And sometimes yes. we may not necessarily be, uh, you know, we will not be aware of certain things unless our peers tell us, yes, attended to this time, this is what happened. Why did you do that? Right. You know, so it's, okay. it's quite, quite insightful that the writing is also that part of that peer observation. Yeah, that instrument pushes you to systematize your thoughts in, you know, in a methodological way. And so it, it, it also adds that dimension to the process. Yeah. And if, I, so much. Add, yes. and if I might add, there is also the journaling aspect of reflective practice. When you call your, upon yourself to write journals for yourself and to, to do that reflective practice. So the writing really is, is an integral part of it. And then not just for that purpose, but also to have a record. You curate the whole process by doing the writing. Mm, I like that. I like, so, so documentation is a big part of this entire, um, I wanna say process, even though it's not just a process, but um, of this framework, let's call it that for now. 
um, you know, the, there's the practice aspect of it. There's the writing or documentation part of it, whether it's documentation during the process or even after the entire experience and then um, for, for journaling and so on. Um, Dr. James, I wanted to find out what does reflective practice mean to you? Right. Well, I would look specifically, well, first let me say thank you for inviting me to be on this panel. I am quite happy about that. And I would look well. at reflective practice from the perspective and in the context of action research. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, I would also answer the question how action research can be a catalyst for evaluating, for elevating, sorry, your educational impact. And Education is nothing if it does not have impact. Let me start by saying that. I will start first by sort of um, qualifying this term action research. Action research is characterized by an iterative process of planning, acting, observing, and reflecting. This cyclical approach allows educators to continuously assess the impact of their interventions and make adjustments based on feedback and evidence. Educators revisit and refine their reflections, goals, and the strategies in response to new evidence, feedback, and insights gained through the research process. As such, action research encourages educators to reflect critically on their teaching practices, experiences, and assumptions. Through ongoing reflection, educators can identify areas for improvement and develop a deeper understanding of their roles as instructional leaders. Now, reflective practice in action research refers to that process by which educators systematically examine their own and or their colleagues' teaching practices, experiences, and assumptions to identify strengths, weaknesses, and areas for improvement. This process involves critical self-reflection, reflection on and in action, and analysis. It's often guided by the cyclical nature of the action research process. Here's how reflective practice operates within the context of action research. You have self-reflection, where educators engage in thoughtful examination of their teaching methods, instructional decisions, and interactions with colleagues, students, and stakeholders within their teaching learning environments. They consider the impact of their actions on student learning outcomes and the overall classroom, departmental and the school environments. Secondly, data analysis. Reflective practice in action research involves analyzing both qualitative and quantitative data collected during the research process. Educators examine evidence of, for example, student performance, clinical supervision, feedback from assessments, and observations of classroom behavior to identify patterns and trends. Thirdly, identifying patterns and trends through reflection and data analysis, educators identify recurring themes or patterns in their teaching practice or their colleagues. They may recognize certain instructional strategies that consistently lead to positive outcomes, as well as areas where students or colleagues may struggle or require additional support. Fourthly, questioning assumptions. Reflective practice rarely is about questioning. And, and finding ways to answer these questions. So reflective practice prompts educators to challenge their own assumptions and beliefs about teaching and learning. They consider alternative perspectives 
and approaches that may better meet the needs of diverse learners or address specific challenges within the educational context. Five, setting goals for improvement. Based on their reflections and data analysis, educators can establish clear measurable goals for improving their practice. These goals may focus on enhancing student engagement, fostering critical thinking skills, implementing differentiated instruction strategies, or improving pedagogical skills. Six, implementing changes. Educators use the insights gained from reflective practice to inform changes in their approach to teaching and learning and classroom department and school environments. They may experiment with new instructional approaches, methods, revise lesson plans, or adjust classroom management strategies based on their findings. And finally, monitoring of progress. Reflective practice involves ongoing monitoring and evaluation of the effectiveness of implemented changes. It also allows for making adjustments, as I said before. Educators collect additional data, solicit feedback from students and colleagues, and reflect on the impact of their interventions over time. So to summarize for you, mm. the purpose of reflective practice is really to construct meanings of one's actions by analyzing one's goals, plans, intentions, behaviors or actions, outcomes and impact. Note that even though the plan is successful, its impact should be evaluated because there can be unintended outcomes. Another purpose of reflective practice is to evaluate the value of one's teaching and one's practice. Thirdly, to evaluate learning, because education is about learning. That's the crux of the matter. Classroom, department, and the school levels of learning. And fourthly, by integrating reflective practice into action research, educators deepen their understanding of their teaching practice and those of their peers. They improve their ability to meet the needs of diverse learners, create inclusive learning environments, innovate the pedagogical core, create innovative learning environments, and ultimately enhance student outcomes. Mm -hmm. So much for that. I like that you highlighted some of the, the outcomes or benefits of reflective practice as it pertains mm -hmm. to um, action research and, and really, you know, you gave a step-by-step -step, um, account of it in, 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 in as well. Um, one of the things I wanted, because we spoke about some of the benefits and the outcomes and so on of reflective practice from the angles of um, reflective writing, peer observation, um, action research, but what are about some of the challenges that persons may encounter in, in, in trying to do, to implement these things. Anyone could chime in. Um, perhaps we could all, yeah. you know, yeah. present one, talk about one challenge and a solution perhaps. I, I would I would perhaps start with the idea of persons, some of us don't like to write. Um, <laughs> and, and it is a challenge. I mean, even in the action research, which leads to action learning, you're learning based on the journaling is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And I think persons naturally have a, uh, the, the idea of journaling and, and writing seems a little bit too much for, for, for some of them or for some of us. And so there are times when we uh, we we may want to internalize something and not really take an account of it. But I think that is one of the challenges and the missed opportunities when we do not write. 
And there's so many tools that we can use. I'm, I'm, although I focus on writing, it could actually be the, the using perhaps a recorder. I remembered um, my time in university. Some of my best ideas I got was when I did my walking. And so I actually walked. Um, I had an idea for innovative um, 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 tool where someone would, when they but and that was in 2008 and now we see it actually happening where you could actually record something and it puts it in text and it sends it up in the cloud and immediately that reflective writing or moves from audio to text in that kind of fluid way so i think for me that challenge of writing is one of those things we need to move beyond and I also think from the writing perspective is understanding that reflective writing takes a different approach. It, it really takes a different approach. It's not just descriptive. It's not just a summary. It's it's moving beyond the what and the when. Um, more importantly, it really stresses the why and the how I went to do it and why I did it. And as we mentioned earlier, the introspection introspective questions that leads to the to that genuine growth and transformation um being honest about it because <laughs> even in a peer observation session when you write that down you have to be honest to say that you know it's 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 really allowing you to bridge um your writing and your experience mm -hmm. uh, with insight deep insight and I'll, I'll be quiet here because i really want my colleagues to also chip in as to what are the challenges they see but for me that has and i note it is is because even when we come to the assignment for cuttle when they come to that course um mervin the six credit writing a reflective writing and when they see that they have to write the reflective account for professional practice it's like whoa and you wonder you know They've written, they've written extensively, but when it comes to that, they said, no, that's going to be a difficult task for them. Mm. Yes, um, that is so true, uh, Dr. Hill. Uh, reflective practice is very challenging, especially from, for persons, for, for, for professionals who have not been socialized into thinking like this. And I find that some of my colleagues in the science in the areas of science, you know, maths and physics, or what we sometimes call the hard sciences, medicine too. Um, they are particularly taken aback about what we are asking them to do. Uh, this whole notion of reflecting on your learning, this whole notion of becoming very introspective is not something that I believe that their learning opportunities has kind of exposed them to. They were not socialized into this way of learning. And so they begin to question the value. I think eventually most of them come to appreciate it, but they, in a number of cases, they look at first skeptically at this approach because this is not the done thing in our field of endeavor. But yeah. in the long run, I think most of them come to appreciate it and to recognize the value. Of course, in education in an other, in an, and in other fields, the, the value of, of reflecting and thinking deeply about your activities. And as doc, Dr. Freddie James pointed out really um, earlier on, questioning assumptions that action research can lead to is so important if we are to get to that place of transformative learning and transformative learning or transformational learning might mean different things to different people. But for us in, in adult and higher education, as we have learned at the feet of people like Mesiru and so on, others, it's really <laughs> a big, deep and abiding change yeah. in how we see reality. And that's important. It is, you know, a, a very deep change in how we understand and engage in our lives, um, professional and otherwise, when, when we reach that place of transformative learning. So yes, this whole notion of questioning assumptions is something that some of us are afraid of. 
Yeah. Because, yeah. You know, it, it is, it, it is sometimes it's frightening because we have been introduced and socialized into so many bodies of learning and ways of operation that we might just become uncomfortable as we begin to question some of the norms or some of the ways in which we have traditionally lived our life. And we're saying that by teaching and learning, because we can't really separate both, mm -hmm. um, we are going, we can reach that place of transformative learning. And perhaps this is what we should be about. And and I, if I may, I, you, know, you use the word realities, um, Dr. Chisholm, and immediately it, it conjured up the idea of Brookfield's four lenses Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we see we see reflection in in multiple lenses. <laughs> so, uh, it's important for us to be open up to alternative. And you mentioned the critical friends, um, the scholarship of teaching and learning. I I really appreciate Dr. Uh, James zooming in on that. And I think that multiple realities in bringing us to that position is an important part, which is which is really what I I. I, I like that they have so many frameworks to assist us in making that pivot, that reflective, that reflection, a reflective um, um, practice. It's not just left, um, you know, so there's so many different frameworks and models to really assist um, faculty. And some of those things we will be allowing, I, I guess we will be uh, uh, reviewing some of them this during the reflective week. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Dr. James, I don't know if you want to chime in. Yes. Um, to add, I, I want to extend perhaps what both um, of my colleagues have said. And culturally and historically, we are not a society that is open to opening ourselves up for scrutiny or our practice mm -hmm. for scrutiny. And uh, that could perhaps be because of... Um, a historical and cultural self-contempt that has come with um, colonization. And <laughs> we have not yet decolonized that aspect of self. So persons are not very willing even to do that um, intrapersonal scrutiny that is required, that self-reflection, because you don't want to, to, to see something that you might feel is ugly, but you might find that when you do look, you find something very positive. So mm -hmm. that kind of uh, lacking of confidence to, to open oneself and, one, and one's work to the scrutiny of others is, is something we definitely have to build a foundation yeah. for, mm -hmm. in, in our teaching and learning um, as we approach reflective practice and, like and that is why i like uh dr chisholm coined it uh critical friends mm -hmm. we ought to look at our colleagues as critical friends and uh, here at the ue st augustine we have piloted uh a, ref a peer observation framework we're really proud of that and we're inviting persons to really um use the framework there, there, there is a clear uh, benefit for using it and persons have really talk, spoken to us about hey this is really collaborative and developmental it's not to we've, we've intentionally not call it peer uh, evaluation we call it peer observation and feedback and so because we recognize the power of of the critical friends we ought to be critical about our own growth we've 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 made a lot of effort in putting that forward so uh, I, I I just want to put in that plug for the peer observation framework that we have advanced here at the UA Center, but Augustine, it's not just part of the cuttle. I mean, within the cuttle it's used, but we've also now opened it up to the wider. And I know that this is something that's done in the School of Education, Dr. Freddie, but we feel that the wider university needs to practice it as, as well. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Go ahead. Here, uh, Dr. Freddie James mentioned something about our cultural and historical um, concerns um, or the cultural and historical issues that might prevent us from engaging in open and, and critical look at our, our, our teaching and so on. And then 
Um, Dr. Hill just mentioned the framework that has been developed at, at St. Augustine. We have developed our own tool. One of the things that it seems to be calling us to is to, to the extent to which we can open some of this up to, 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 to a Caribbean reality and mm -hmm. um, indigenization of our pedagogy, indigenization of how we look at things. And perhaps what we should be talking about here mm -hmm. is how we can indigenize our ped pedagogy and how we can indigenize our critical engagement in looking at our teaching. What specific questions should be in such frameworks that mm -hmm pulls us and challenges us to look at our pedagogy, to look at our operations with a Caribbean lens. I'm not so sure what your framework con contains, Dr. Hill, but I would be very much um, interested in how we can look at it with yeah. Caribbean lens. So that's a, that's a layer. Uh, I guess when we're, looking at, when we're looking at the lens, it's a layered lens from a sociocultural perspective. Mm -hmm. When we look at our critical friends, we're looking at them with the context that, hey, they are, there is that challenge of digital divide. And sometimes we do encourage, for example, the use of technology. But many of them in the rooms, Wi-Fi is not operational. So in being critical with them, we, 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 they think on their feet and they actually just ignore the technology and focus on a different engagement process. And you are amazed to see the learning that takes place, not just for the observer, but for the observees, but, but for both of them, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so I, I, I think I think certainly I mean, and the, the framework, obviously, from that layer from being uh, socioculturally perspective, I think each of us, given the opportunity to see another person teach, will certainly recognize that there are those ingrained. Um, I, I remembered uh, a, a, a reference being made to stick fighting, is it? And teaching that, <laughs> uh, 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 Dr. Freddie from Humanities, you should you should correct me. And documenting all of that in a teaching, it was such a wonderful experience that yet while you had the direct instruction, you did have the various um, technology and, and, and instructional artifacts that brought that back to life as a historical element uh, for us uh, in, in, from a teaching standpoint. And as 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 just before you wrap up, I want to pose this question to Dr. James. In light of what we we were just talking about with the let's call it perhaps a Caribbean footprint in terms of reflective <laughs> practice, um, do you think in 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 from the vein of action research and that sort of thing that there's a place for for or space I should say for for that kind of 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 action research from the Caribbean perspective where we because we know within the Caribbean it's multifaceted so there are different I don't say subcultures or subcontexts but there are, there are differences even though we are it's one region there are differences or, or nuances across the the region but do you think that there's a place for that in in in, in action research um when it comes to reflective practice and action and um, action research most definitely because the thing about action research is the level of authenticity that's mm -hmm. embedded in, in it. And if, if you go in the root of authenticity, then it has to come from the bowels and the belly of self mm -hmm. and culture and context. Mm -hmm. And therefore, certainly what the action research that would be conducted here and um would be in, in our Caribbean context and, and within the, the cultural parameters that pervade our space. And mm -hmm. so we are able to, to get past the pervasive self-contempt um, that has been our legacy. You, you would find that persons would be more willing to engage in action research because they, they would see the benefits of not just improving their own practice and improving their own learning communities, but yeah. also sharing with the world how this can be done within our own Caribbean context. Wow. Wow. And Chair, if I may yes. add, I would perhaps rephrase a question that uh, Spivak asked, can the subaltern speak? <laughs> and 
it is it is deep because it is here that we can promote that we do have our own um journal uh, mm -hmm. the caribbean teaching scholar yes we are very proud of the caribbean teaching scholar and so dr james thank you for putting that plug that we as a caribbean people we can be contributors to that scholarship of teaching and learning mm -hmm. and the caribbean teaching scholar we've relaunched it because we recognize the importance of contributing to that intelligentsia that we need to be continuing uh, active academics reflective academics mm -hmm. but also contributing it from a caribbean context yeah we can speak i think um thank you so much for that dr hill and the the panel is all dr chisholm dr james um there are some some nuggets we got throughout this entire discussion um one of course the caribbean voice and that is that is um a treasure as it were and it was and, a layer throughout all <laughs> yeah and and um, of course the different angles that we took in terms of reflective writing um peer observation action research um the Caribbean voice or the Caribbean perspective um and as it pertains to action uh peer observation and uh, not peer observation sorry reflective practice and um and really I, I I like the different threads throughout and having those critical friends Dr Chisholm mm -hmm. um could you just, I know I was just, could you elaborate what you meant by critical friends, just so our viewing mm -hmm. audience could, you know, because you don't want friends who will just compliment us when we do peer observation or any sort of reflective practice, but I'm pretty sure you'd like colleagues who will keep it real as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the critical friend is not, it's not an original thought in it. It's pretty well mm -hmm. documented yeah. in the literature, mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. reference to a colleague or to a mentor providing support and challenge on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, within a group network or, or just because, you know, you want the critical friend to be there. You yeah. know, you can call on this person to watch your teaching or to review your, your research or something of that nature and give you professional advice, but in a friendly way, not challenging you because you know, you want one upmanship, the critical friend will also offer alternative perspectives, will prompt deeper reflection, will cause you to reappraise, to get out of your comfort zone, to engage in a conversation that needs to go to another level and so on. That is the kind of critical yeah. friend we are thinking about and sometimes we might have to give persons an understanding of what we we mean by this in yeah. our work with our faculty here at the mona campus we do take them through this kind of training as to how are you going to engage in this peer observation mm -hmm. how are you going to relate as a critical friend because you're a friend but at the same time, we just don't want you to say, well, everything is good. Exactly. And <laughs> the person, everything is not good. <laughs> the person to respond in a similar way mm. to you because it is non-evaluative. Mm -hmm. Persons are in a safer area, in a safer zone that they yeah. can actually give critical comments and, and feel as if nobody's really judging me, but this is right. being done for my growth and development thank you so much for that and that brings us to another another point that a thread throughout this discussion that reflective practice whether it's in, in the vein of reflective writing peer observation or action research um requires one to be vulnerable yeah i think the panelists could agree it's in some ways yes yes and so that <laughs> is why you need as, as dr chisholm mentioned the safe space and that critical friend not just a critical person but a critical friend Yes, you can feel that 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 confidence in, and you can you can have that trust in to give you the the objective feedback. Yeah, yeah. and even in terms of research, um, that feeds into action research as well. So I really want to take this time to thank um the panelists that we have today, uh, Dr. Freddie James, Dr. Mervyn Chisholm, and Dr. Leroy Hill. Um, thank you so much for the the sharing your knowledge, your expertise, the insights. Um, I think we need to do this a little more, having such discussions. <laughs> but um, really, thank you for 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 joining us um, in this discussion. And just before we 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 as we wrap up, I should say, um, 
we just want to outline some of the events that comprise our teaching and learning week. Um, we have uh, the, the on Tuesday. Um, now, first of all, teaching and learning week is from Monday 15th of April to Thursday 18th of April. Um, following this session, we have another one on, on Tuesday. Um, I think that's the 16th. Tuesday the 16th of April, we have peer observation, reflective practice in higher education and interactive interview. And that session is gonna be spearheaded by Dr. Julia Jones, who's also of the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. Uh, we also have on the Wednesday, uh, building your e-portfolio evidence of practice. And that session will be led by myself and uh, uh, Mr. Javid Mohammed who is the e-learning support specialist at the CETL. Following that, we have um, action research, inquiry-based teaching. I'm pretty sure Dr. James will be interested in that as well. Um, that session is um, gonna be led or spearheaded by Mr. Mark Garcia. All right, and Dr. James, of course, you're free to join, you're free to, 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 to assist. We, well, we welcome your, your um, any help you could get from you as far as this, not just the action research workshop, but reflective practice and um, this entire teaching and learning week, both you and Dr. Chisholm. So feel free to, to share this information with your colleagues. You can join us. Um, you can register for these sessions. They're all online. You can register for these sessions um, on our CTL website. And um, and I think that should be it. Not so, Dr. Hill, I think. Yeah, that should be it. I mean, we, want, we want to invite the participants who are, who are listening to this or taking part to tell us what does reflective practice mean to you? Mm -hmm. uh, in the chat room, in the chat, That's we really want you to go ahead and do that right now before we, while we're closing. We <laughs> want to reflect what are your key takeaways from this? Um, go ahead and add it to the chat. Let's, let's see what does that mean to you? So thank and, you so very much. And I think the team is going to put up any information regarding the teaching and learning week. All right, until next time. Have a good day, everyone, and continue reflecting, continue documenting, continue uh, pay observing, continue in reflective, oh, continue writing, and continue yeah. reflective practice. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course, we write. We write to make our thoughts, to force us to think.